Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your children, brothers, sisters, young and old, that you are brought to the Bible study today. We pray that you reveal your heart, your mind, to every one of us in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that the truth you reveal will become part of our lives and will walk by your word, by the rule, by your revelation, by your grace in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you help us too to tell others, teach others, enlighten others so that both they and ourselves will make it on that final day to glory in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said a good amen. amen. We've been studying from the epistle of Paul, the apostle, to the Corinthians, the first epistle. And now we come to chapter 6. We're reading from chapter 6, verse 1. Please open your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law, go to the court, before the unjust, and not before the saints. As we look at this verse today, and the verses that follow, we see the revelation of the mind of God, what God wants, what God desires, and what God has ordained is asking us a question, and the answer appears obvious. And in the verses that follow, the answer is given very clearly and pointedly to every child of God. It says, There are any of you, any of you in the family of God. Actually, Paul the Apostle is writing to the church. The church is ecclesia, that is the assembly that is called out of the world. And the church is an assembly of saints, of children of God. So when he said, there are any of you, any of you saints, any of you children of God, any of you members of the family of God, any of you that are already called out of the world, there are any of you having a matter against another, against another brother, against another sister, against another member of the family? There are any of you go to law, go to the law courts before the unjust, that is, before the people of the world, before the judges of the world, and not before the saints? For you to understand who Paul the Apostle by the Spirit is writing to, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 2. As you look at verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified, set apart in Christ, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, called to be saints so he's writing to the church and he's writing to the saints and he says with all that in every place call upon the name of jesus christ our lord is talking to a body of believers and he says it's our lord both theirs and ours look at verse 26 chapter 1 verse 26 it says in verse 26, it says, For you see your calling, brethren, is talking to brethren, believers in the church, those who are children of God, members of the family. You see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. We are called into the kingdom and we become part of the church. 
part of the body of Christ. And then he says, if we have any matter, if there's any challenge, if there's any disagreement, and if there is any anything between us and another brother, another sister, there are any of you, brethren, any of your saints, any of your members of the church of the living God, there are any of you having a matter against another, go to the law court, one against the other. Should we do that? The answer is no. Let's come back to that chapter 6, verse 1. Let's say, for example, in your family, you have a matter with your dad, your father here on earth. You will not run to the court and say, I have this against my father. Let's say you have something against your mother. As members of the family, you are hurt by what your mom had done. You're not going to run to the court and say, I can't settle that in the family. I have to take mom to the court. You can't do that. Your junior brother, your junior sister, or your senior, the siblings in the same family, you have a matter against them and then instead of telling dad and mom and then they resolve that for you you say you are going to the law court then you do that normally even unbelievers will not do that even those who don't know the lord will not do that and so we who are children of god we will not do that let me ask you a question you are a father you are a mother and then you have one of your children and that child has not behaved well is gone into some characteristics that are damnable terrible and that child has hurt you one way or the other would you as a mother take your child to the court will you as a father take your child to the court that's why the lord is asking us if we don't do that in the human family how dare you do that in god's own family let me ask you another question who is closer to you your child or your husband who is closer to you your child or your uh, or your wife if you will not take your child to court if you'll not take your daughter to court if you'll not take your son to court will you take your husband to court if the husband is closer than the son if the uh, wife is closer than the daughter will you take your husband or your daughter or your wife to court if you'll not take your son or your or your daughter to court it's very clear what the Lord is teaching us, how to resolve our problems, how to resolve our conflicts. That's why we come to this chapter today with the understanding that if we know we're children of God and we are members of the family of God, there are things we'll not even think about. Their directions will not even go in resolving the problems in our families and the problems in our lives. The topic today is resolving conflicts among saints by scriptural standards. Resolving conflicts among saints by scriptural standards. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, decisive justice among saints through spirit-filled shepherds we have shepherds we have leaders and we have pastors in the church and we're supposed to be spirit-filled and the way we decide matters of disagreement and matters of conflict is that we take that to the leaders in the church decisive justice among saints through spirit-filled shepherds Point number two, destined judgment for sinning against scriptural standards. Destined judgment for sinning against scriptural standards. Point number three is divine justification of submissive sins by the Savior. We come as sinners to the Lord, we repent of our sins, and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He forgives us. 
it changes our lives it cleanses us we're converted and now we become submissive unto the lord our savior and now he gives us justification that conversion brings righteousness and new life justification into our hearts into our lives and our names enter the book of life as children of god and then after that we now walk according to the standard of scripture according to the standard of the word of god i pray god will give every one of us grace that whatever happens at any time in any area against anyone with anyone we as justified saints and children of god where we live by the word of god by the standard of scripture in jesus name i thought the church will say amen, amen. let's come to point number one now decisive justice among saints through spirit-filled shepherds Look at 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, but brother goeth to law with brother. That is in the Corinthian church, whatever happened to them, any conflict, any quarrels, any disagreement in the home, in the family, in their places of work, or just among them as they were in fellowship of, in the fellowship of believers. They'll just run to the law court. And that's why it says, But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers, before the unjust. It says that is not right for you, for me, for anyone. Let's look at three things here. Number one is the sin of resolving saints' conflicts in the world's cause. In the world's cause. We go to them and then they resolve for us this way or that way. It's a sin when anybody does that. You might do that and get money. You might do that and get landed property. You might do that and get whatever as the judge in the court. But whatever verdict you have in the court and whatever gain you think you've got, you lost your relationship, interaction, and fellowship with the Lord. You become a sinner, a backslider, whatever you get out of the case. The sin of resolving sins conflicts in the world's cause. Number two, the superiority of righteous saints counsel above the world's comprehension. The world cannot understand they do not understand christ they do not understand the christians and they do not understand the fellowship we have with christ with god in the holy ghost and with one another and so the word of god is superior to any law superior to anything you can get in the world's Cause because they cannot really comprehend the way of God or the might of God. Number three, the settling of reported serious clashes by wise counselors. Let's come to number one. Number one is the scene of resolving sins complete in the world's cause. Let's come back to First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1 it says dear any of you wanting to get to heaven dear any of you wanting to keep your relationship with god dear any of you wanting to remain a real child of god a pilgrim on your way to heaven dear any of you having a matter against another a matter any matter 
it may concern property it may concern work it may concern relationship between husband and wife it may concern anything you disagree with with a brother or with a sister it may be personal it may affect other people around you all the same there are any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints look at matthew chapter 18 what the lord has commanded us to do in matthew chapter 18 reading from verse 15 it says moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee that brother may be a husband that brother may be just a fellow brother or may be a sister may be your wife any brother at all he may be a worker in the church may be a leader in the church or might just be an ordinary member in the church moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone don't say he will not listen to me he never listens to me don't say i'm too small to confront him don't say um, i can't uh, state my case very well don't say i don't know how to talk don't say if i go near near him and when he talks he'll make me feel ashamed i will even be ashamed and ask myself why did i go to him why did i tell him jesus said you must not give any of those excuses your brother has trespassed against you your sister has trespassed against you go and tell him his fault between him between thee and him alone don't say it's my fault why should i go and tell him i'm the one that carried myself to him i'm the one that carried myself to her and i'm guilty myself and because but you are, but you are born in inside and you are concerned inside you will go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if he shall hear thee thou hast gained thy brother not going to lock up just between you and you settle everything and then in verse 16 in verse 16 it says but if he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more that's the directive of the lord jesus christ that is how we settle conflicts between us and the brethren any of the brethren the wife will not go to her parents and then go and report we are telling them to judge that's a form of court and then the husband will not go to his own parents and begin to report the wife look at what she has done look at what she's doing i never expected this as you are reporting to your parents already you are telling them to judge her that's a form of court you'll not go to your neighbors and you'll not go to your friends and be telling them what is happening at home you will tell her you will tell him directly if it's a business that brought you together and then he has not a given your right you'll not be telling everybody you'll not put on the platform your whatsapp and then you write it there you blow it out there and then you tell other people you're already telling the world to judge him and you're telling those in the platform to judge him that's already a form of court and those people without giving him or her a chance to explain his own part, her own part. They're already judging, and you have added some things to make your case look like you are cheated, and uh, you know the person is not uh, behaving right to you. We shouldn't do that. Let's come back to the words of Jesus. If we're following the Lord, He says, "If He will not hear you, then take with you one or two more." that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established what if he doesn't hear them what if he's a difficult person what if he's a tough-minded person what if he's somebody who will never listen to anyone is full of himself is never wrong what he has done is what he has done and he doesn't see anything wrong in what he has done 
Jesus tells us, our Lord, our Savior tells us, the next thing to do, look at verse 17, it says, and if he will, if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church, tell it to the leadership of the church. If you are part of the church, you respect the church, you honor the church. You respect the leadership in the church. You look up to the leadership in the church. You have confidence in the leadership of the church. And Jesus said, upon this rock I built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Jesus gives recognition to his church. And he says, if you have told him one on one, and he has not heard, don't go to the law court. And if you have uh, called two other people and he has not heard, don't jump and don't run to the law cause. He says, you will tell the church. It shall, if you shall neglect them, tell it to the church. But if he shall neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Then you understand, you are not dealing with a believer. You are not dealing with a righteous one. And what did Jesus say after that? When that has happened, run to the law court because I've done point one, I've done point two, I've done point three, and now I'm justified. If I go to the court, no, not at all. You know what Jesus said? If he slaps you on the one cheek, turn the other also. We're going to the kingdom of God and we want to enter that glorious heaven eventually. And then if he forces you to go one mile, go with him twain. That's what he said. He didn't say if he has not uh, had the church and is behaving like somebody who wants to cheat and who wants to make you what you are not, then you run to the court. Then he says if he takes your cloak, Turn, turn to him another garment also allow yourself to be cheated and then turn your case over into the hands of God I pray God will grant us the grace in Jesus name amen for the grace of God in your life look at number two now number two the superiority of the of righteous saints counsel above the world's comprehension we're coming to first corinthians chapter six and we're reading from verse two it says in verse two do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world it's asking a question it says you must understand that the judges of this world their judgment and their position and their authority and their verdict ends in this world it says the judges of this world now in all the law courts in every country of the world once they leave this earth they're not going to be judges when they get on the other side they are not going to be judges when they get to uh, the eternity. But it says, don't you know that the saints of God, the children of God, the people of God, that we are above and we are higher than the judges of this world. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you, if the world shall be judged by us, believers, children of God, are ye not worthy, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? What are we talking about, lad? The smallest matters? Disagreement between you and brother so and so, the smallest matters in comparison with your inheritance, in comparison with your fellowship with God, in comparison with all the provisions of God for you, in comparison with your inheritance in Christ, all the things people are arguing about. I want this, I want this, I must get this out of him, I must get this out of her. I will not allow him to go with all that and, uh, and cheat my Myself, I will not allow her to go with that and then I will not have my right it says they are of the smallest matters they are not to be compared with heaven 
They are not to be compared with the peace of God you have. They are not to be compared with the promises of God that you have. Because it will still supply all your needs according to his riches by glory in Christ Jesus. So you are not going to an NGO. You are not going to the people who are human rights fighters. They'll fight for me. The Lord is saying, if you are a child of God, he has brought you out of that. He has brought you out of the world. And you totally belong to the Lord. And your case rests in the hand of God. And God will fight for you. Let's look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, Know ye not that we shall judge angels look at that it's saying think about how the law courts in the world no judge in the world will be called upon to judge the angels but we who are children of god and we who are co-heirs and joint heirs with the lord jesus christ it says we are going to be the judges over the angels and if you are going to judge the angels how much more things that pertain to this life the lord is calling us back and the lord is saying that when we get eventually to the kingdom the high position we're going to have and the high authority we're going to have we must not jeopardize that at this time the lord himself has lifted us up will not drag ourselves down to the law courts of the world in jesus name let me hear your amen Let's look at number three now. Number three is the settling of reported serious clashes by wise counselors. We're settling our clashes, we're settling our problems. And if you believe the Bible, and he believes the Bible, if she believes the Bible, and you believe the Bible, very simple. Here is a matter of disagreement. You are thinking this way, and she is thinking the other way. And then you come together. If you didn't know the verse that you ought to refer to, as you come to your leaders, as you come to your counselors, as you come to the people that know enough of the word of God to bring you to Christ, and to make you stay in Christ, and make you abide in Christ, and they have enough knowledge of the word of God to know the mind of Christ for we have the mind of Christ and they know the message of Christ if they have enough message that will take you from here and take you to heaven why can't they solve all the other problems that you have why can't they settle all the other problems that are to be settled that's why it says in first corinthians chapter 6 reading from verse 4 it says if ye then have judgments of things pertaining to this life things pertaining to this life that covers a lot of ground whatever it is anything pertaining to this life everything pertaining to this life and what are we what are people going to court about things pertaining to this life it may be as i've said it may be land maybe property maybe you have a particular possession and you feel it shouldn't be in his hand it should be in my hand maybe you feel he's trying to steal that away from me they are all things pertaining to this life whatever it is you will not take to heaven all the sand all the cement all the stone all the utensils everything all the property whatever you'll not take to heaven if that is where the disagreement is if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life search them to judge search them to judge who are the least esteemed in the church so you don't have any excuse i can't get to the leaders get to the least in the church get to the brother in the church there get to the sister in the church there and you are not reporting to page the other person black you are just simply stating your case i have this challenge 
I want it resolved with my brother, with my sister. You are not doing that in anger. You are not doing that with a judgmental spirit. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he is wrong. I want somebody to help us look into this and we resolve the matter. And while you are resolving the matter, you'll not tell any lie. You'll not withhold information. You'll not add any information that is not really part of the matter. You keep to the matter and you say it intelligently and you say it convincingly and you say it well enough for the other person to agree that's exactly how it is or maybe that is not how it is okay if i'm wrong you can correct me on this or that it is with such a mind in love with such a mind in sincerity with such a mind in honesty and with such a mind wanting the truth to prevail not that i must prevail i must win the case i must you know trample over him i must get him out of this place i must have the upper hand you don't have anything like that in your mind all you want is for truth to prevail all you want is the will of god to prevail that's how to settle matters when you come with a free mind when you come with a cleansed mind when you come with a sanctified heart and when you come with a lowly spirit and you're not so proud and pompous you want to oppress the other person because that's exactly what you are saying the other person is doing and you must not be guilty of that if they ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church and then in verse 5 it says i speak to your shame uh, Paul the Apostle was talking to his children, children in the Lord, and he said, Corinthians, I'm ashamed of you that you didn't know enough to endure and then any little things that I come you wear your temper and you wear your feeling on your sleeves and you're running to the world for the world to judge your brother your sister your husband your wife or your children or anyone for you I speak this to your shame is it so that there is not a wise man among you you claim to have the gifts of the spirit and you claim to know uh, things of the mysteries of the kingdom is it so there is not a wise man among you you claim to have word of knowledge and word of wisdom and you claim to have the discerning of spirit and you say we're above all the other churches in spiritual gifts and is it so there is not a wise man a wise believer among you you claim that you have faith and you claim that you have the mind of christ and you claim that you are reigning in life and yet you go to other people those who don't even have christ they don't even have salvation they don't even profess salvation and you go to them to resolve your matters for you he said no not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren and now he says in verse 6 he says but brother goes to law with brother husband goes to law with wife wife goes to the law court because of the husband and children take their parents to the law court to the world to judge them and then they say i don't want to be a victim they're victimizing me they're doing this and that and therefore i must resolve this it's good to resolve but how do you resolve do you resolve for the people that do not have christ they do not have the spirit of god they do not have the understanding and the standard of the scriptures and they do not have the yardstick by which believers are examined and believers are evaluated and but brother goes to law with brother and that before the unbelievers the lord is saying it's not right that we should make sure that we become wise according to the word 
knowledge of God and we become wise as we follow the standard of the word of God it tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 15 2 Timothy chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 15 it says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which is able to make you wise unto salvation can i explain that to you he's talking to timothy and he's saying timothy from a child you have known the holy scriptures and the holy scriptures you have heard from when you were a child is able to make you wise unto salvation and salvation is greater than any other sin you're looking for any other sin you're arguing about any other sin you're trying to claim you see there are people who say they have been in christ from a child and they will say when there's no problem when they are talking to their friends and their and their brothers and sisters you know i know all that i know the scriptures because i've been in this church from a child i got saved as a child and then i went to primary school i was in christ i went to secondary school i was in christ and i knew the scriptures and I went to university I will say I was in the Lord and I had the wisdom of the scriptures now I am married and now that I'm married there's a problem now and you have known the scriptures from your childhood is it so that all the scriptures you knew from when you were a child in the church in the children church now you're an adult and now you have a problem and now you have a concern and then you are running to uh, the court how does that match how does that tally with all you have been saying uh, the scriptures you knew and the standard you held from a little child that's what paul the apostle was saying is saying the scriptures make us wise and the scriptures lead us to wisdom the wisdom of solving problems and the wisdom of living according to the word of God and now that you are wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus in verse 16 he tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God all scripture you'll find your solution there all scripture you find your answer there all scripture you find the resolution how to resolve your problems there all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction and for instruction in righteousness in verse 17 that the man of god the woman of god the child of god the member of the church the one that is going through deep waters the one that is having any challenge now that that child of god may be perfect when you go to court with your husband with your wife you go to court with a fellow brother that's not perfection you don't want christ to meet you like that he's coming again he'll come anytime from now he's coming he's very soon he's coming he's imminent you don't want him to come while you're dragging a case in the court that's not perfection but the word of god that comes to us and we resolve our problems with the word of god makes us perfect truly furnished unto all good works truly furnished unto all good works i pray this word will be practical in every one of our lives in jesus name and whatever the lord has corrected in our lives maybe you are planning to do something like that or maybe you're already in the process of doing something like this already you are going to court it may be the regular court it may be your court on your whatsapp your court on your platform and you are reporting a fellow brother and you are telling some details and all that about your brother about your sister about the church about a member of the church and you're putting 
judging it on the platform in social media and everybody they're already judging they're already commenting how can somebody do it like that how can somebody do it like that they're already condemning that brother or that sister for you and then you say aha uh -huh, i've had my own way now because i'm going to make the world and those in social media to crucify him and to let everybody know that it's not a good man it's not a good woman that's exactly what the lord said we should not do if you've taken your case to the world like that come back and take the case away from there and say i know how to solve the problem now i'll be all right you'll be all right in jesus name let's come to point number two now point number two destined judgment for sinning against scriptural standards we're reading from first corinthians chapter six and we're reading from verse seven first corinthians chapter six verse seven now therefore there is utterly a fault among you there's no doubt about it corinthians as you do this and you go to the law court one against the other there is definitely a fault among you there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another why do you not rather suffer wrong why don't you do like abraham lord has taken that part the better part and then i'll take whatever remains why don't you do like joseph that he will not complain he will not report all those brothers unto potiphar or to anybody look at even when potiphar's wife told a lie a big lie a great lie against joseph that made potiphar to throw him into the prison why didn't he complain why didn't he say no you don't know your wife i know your wife she's been troubling me that she wants this and she wants that and i'm not done anything why did he complain like that it says why do ye not rather suffer wrong you claim to be saved you cannot endure anything you claim to be sanctified you cannot endure anything you even claim you are baptized in the holy ghost and you came you claim that you're a worker you claim that you are even a leader in the church but to say i'll not take away this with anybody if anybody hurts me even if it's my wife even if it's my husband i know where to settle the matter church will not have hand in this what's the matter with you and where is your experience and where is your testimony and what are all the professions you are making it says why do ye not rather suffer wrong why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded and then he tells us in verse 8 it says nay ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren it now comes to the people who are cheating other people who are oppressing other people and who are doing things against other people they shouldn't be doing it says you do wrong and you defraud and that your brethren and i is going to tell us the result of that you may think you are clever and you may think that nobody can handle you you may think that whatever they say i will have my way i will do my sin i will do whatever i will do paul the apostle by the spirit makes us understand look at verse 9 it says in verse 9 know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god the unrighteous one may be in corinth the unrighteous one may be hiding under a particular canopy in the church the righteous one is backsliding and is hiding under the fact that they know me in this church and i've been in this church from such and such a time they know me in this church that nobody can handle me whatever i will do i will do they know that i don't care for anything i always damn the consequence it says yes we understand who you are but do you know that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god what's your gain if you gain a, a property if you gain building if you gain a uh, two acres of land if you gain whatever it is that you gain and then for all eternity a hundred years a thousand years a million years trillions of years you 
are there suffering in hell forever and ever all the land you have got and all the property you have got and everything you have done with bold face nobody can challenge me and nobody can talk to me what's going to be your gain don't you know that your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor the effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind in verse 10 it says no thieves no covetous no drunkards no revilers no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god let's look at three things here number one the revelation for submissive saints in god's kingdom number two the rejection of self-centered sinners from god's kingdom number three the repentance that allows submissive seekers into god's kingdom number one in number one it talks about the revelation for submissive saints in god's kingdom when you come into the kingdom of god you came in because you submitted to christ you didn't argue with christ you accepted the demand and the requirement of christ when he says repent you submitted you repented when he says turn around you submitted you turned around and when he says if you're stolen anything from other people go and return it back to them you submitted and you returned it back to them it is that submission in repentance and faith in the lord jesus christ that brought you into the kingdom if you are going to remain in the kingdom you cannot take the hardness of heart the rebellion the rejection and all the sins of the past you cannot take that back and have a heavy load on you a load of sin and say i'm going into the kingdom of god no the same way you came in is the same way you continue you came in by submission and you're going to continue the kingdom of god by submission you didn't argue when it says you know you are a sinner you cannot save yourself believe on the lord jesus christ and you'll be saved you didn't argue and it's because you didn't argue that's what brought conversion it's because you didn't argue and you submitted to the lordship of christ that's how you were saved the same thing now if you're going to remain in the kingdom you don't argue with the scriptures you don't argue with the lord you don't say i've been here for these 30 years that's not a joke i've been here now for these 40 years in deeper life that's not a joke uh-huh you'll be here for 40 years does that give you right authority liberty to change the word of god to alter the word of god as you have been long in the church that has given you authority to argue with christ no not at all 40 years or 50 years in the church doesn't matter we still have to submit ourselves to the word of god that is what will keep us in the kingdom of god look at matthew chapter 5 we're reading from verse 39 matthew chapter 5 we're reading from verse 39 but i say unto you that's christ and he says his word abides and remains forever but i say unto you that he receives not evil that's what christ said and it's only when we submit to that that we can remain in his kingdom but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek turn to him the other also don't go to law and don't go to the court and don't summon you know your brothers your company your gang against him and say this is what he did 
don't tell your friend uh, who might be a person who has authority and who has something he can use to hurt the other fellow he smote me on the right cheek deal with him jesus said no if you're going to remain in the kingdom you cannot be like that that ye receive not evil but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek turn to him the other also and then in verse 40 it tells us if any man will seal thee at the law that he is he is not following the way of christ he doesn't know the way of christ he is the one that first runs to the court and if any man will seal thee at the law and take away thy coat let him have thy cloak also he says no i must have my pound of flesh i must have this that's my right and i'm not going to give in to her i'm not going to give up on this matter until i see the end of this matter i'm going to take this he doesn't say okay he takes a lawyer you take a lawyer too and he goes to the court you go to court you and he's trying to tear that thing away from you you tear it away from him as well and if you cannot have 100 percent if he's going to take 50 you will take 50 that's not the spirit of the christian that's not the spirit of the sanctified child of god that's not the spirit of people who are submissive to the savior who want to get to heaven it says if any man that man may be your husband if anyone that may be your wife if anyone that may be a neighbor if anyone that may be a brother you met in the church and now you establish business together but now he's trying to cheat you he says if he wants to take your coat let him take your cloak also then in verse 41 in verse 41 and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile What's that is talking about he wants to take away your freedom he wants to dictate to you he is the one that's always saying this is what to do i cannot go on in this relationship this man does not understand a 50 50 in husband and wife relationship this man is so hard it's too tough it's like you're in the in the barracks it says this and that is it i don't even have a voice all right i know what to do i'll cut the marriage up i'll destroy the marriage i'll scatter everything i will not be under him and he will not be under me and i may not even marry another person but i will stay like this the lord jesus said that is not the spirit of the christian and that is not the attitude of someone who is on his way to heaven if you're a disciple of the lord jesus christ he wants you to deny yourself of your right he wants you to deny yourself of i like this i want this and this is the way i want if anybody does not respect me i don't respect him too if anyone does not honor me i don't honor her too if she wants to throw a stone i'm going to pick up that stone i have good hand i'm going to throw it back that's not the way of the christian and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile go with him twain go with him twain and do it joyfully and do it happily and say that's the will of god he brought you into my life and he brought me into your life and this is your the result of the will of god in my life i'm here i'm here and you say go one mile yes sir i'll do yes ma i'll do and then after i finish the one mile i say i'm still good enough i'm still energetic i'm still strong enough i can go the second mile do you need more help that's the life of the christian that's the one i just said i'm not going to fight for anything i'm not going to argue about anything i'm available i'm here only for this short time and i will do the will of god you will do the will of god in jesus name do i have a good amen there look at romans chapter 12 verse 17 romans chapter 12 we're reading from verse 17 recompense to no man evil for evil you don't know what she's been doing against me in the privacy of her room and now it's my turn i'm driven to the wall 
if, if you want me, what will you do? And if you are in my position, what will you do? I'm telling you, this man has driven me to the wall and I have to fight back. I have to fight for my life. No, recompense to no man evil for evil. Re provide things honest in the sight of all men. Some of the men are difficult and some of the men are difficult to live with and it says to provide honest things in the sight of all men in verse 18 it says if it be possible as much as lies in you don't let the quarrel start from you as much as lies in you don't let the conflict start from you as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men it takes two to fight if the other person says something rough and you smile and you keep quiet and say i'm sorry did i do something that offended you did i do something that made you act like that please i'm sorry I, I'm, I'm learning we're in the school I didn't know that will offend you but now i learn that that will offend you i'll not do that again don't let the quarrel start from you be a man of peace and be a woman of peace even if you are cheated christ knows everything and he knows how to reward you because you're obedient to the word of god if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men verse 19 it says dearly beloved avenge not yourselves when we go to court what are we trying to do we're trying to avenge ourselves when we go to an authority figure and we report that person and we gossip about that person and we say well i don't know but i'm here i'm just suffering nobody is looking at my condition and if you can help and help me put pressure on him we're trying to avenge ourselves but it says dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give way or give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine it's not yours it's not for you to revenge vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord and then he tells us in verse 20 he says therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him ah he has eaten outside he has girlfriend outside and here i am i'm just like a slave in the home he doesn't even recognize that he has a wife and he goes and goes and goes and before he comes back from where he says he's walking you know already feeling sleepy and then this particular day now he comes and he says my dear uh, what are we going to eat ah you have a dear here when well, you have let me here and i've just been suffering what are you going to eat have you not eaten with your concubine have you not eaten with uh, the people who are taking you to restaurants it says if your enemy even if you regard him as your enemy if he hunger feed him if he thirst give him drink for in so doing uh, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head you melt him to conviction and therefore he says in verse 21 in verse 21 be not overcome of evil have the grace of God and let the grace of God be so strong in you and be so great in you that no evil will overcome the grace of God in you that takes real experience with the Lord go back to Calvary don't fight with him don't fight with her he's um, you know trying to do this and that don't choose the same weapon canal weapon as he's choosing let the grace of God rise in you so that the grace of God will be greater than anything coming from anyone in the world and then he says be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good it will happen Amen. the grace of god will become greater and higher in every one of our lives in jesus name Amen. let's go to number two now is the rejection of self-centered sinners from god's kingdom the rejection of self-centered sinners 
from God's kingdom. We're told in First Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The righteous person may be a preacher. They might give him a location. The people who give him location to go and be preaching there, they don't know his life. They don't know what he does at home and you say i'm suffering here and look look at our leaders they give him a location to go and lead how will he not be misbehaving since everybody thinks it's an angel don't worry about that know ye not that your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god whether it's leading location is leading a district is leading a group is an overseer is a bishop is a prophet is whatever whatever honor the people People of the world give him don't worry about that if he is so righteous if he is oppressing another person if he is killing another person at home and nobody appears to know it's an angel outside but it's a devil inside God knows him know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived neither fornicators no idolaters, no adulterers, no the effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind in verse 10, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I pray our lives will be transformed. We will inherit the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Now tell me what's the use and what's the profit somebody is laboring day and night is almost you know walking in the church until midnight and then before he gets home everybody is tired and then when he gets home he begins to shout on everybody is angry how dare you sleep when i've not come back home where is my food and the food is cold how can i eat this now and i say look at this man the church people now will not know that this is how he behaves at home What's the use, my brother? If you spend all your money, you spend all your time, you spend all your skill, and you spend all your energy in the church, and people think you are up there, and yet you are righteous, you're brutal, you're cruel, you don't have any feeling for anyone at home. If you die, you go to hell and all the things you've done running up and down in church activity will not save you at that time that's the reason it's good for us uh, to think about our lives if the person you are living with your husband or your wife doesn't think you're a real christian stop everything you're doing even if the leadership of the church does not know and the leadership of the church they put you here they put you there they put you there the closest person to you is suffering at home is not happy at home and you say they don't know this man or they don't know this woman that this person is a child of the devil if your wife feels like that about you if your husband feels like that about you leave all those activities and go and settle with the lord for your own sake and then settle with the person you are living with and when that person can testify my husband is now a real christian and my my wife is now a real believer even if you, nobody disciplines you discipline yourself withdraw from the service and say i don't want to perish i don't want to just keep on laboring and yet i'm oppressing people all around me christ may come at any time i pray god will give us wisdom the wisdom to live right and to have the real experience of the child of God in Jesus. In Revelation chapter 21, we're reading from verse 27. Revelation 21, we're looking at verse 27. It tells us in verse 27, and there shall in no wise enter into it any that defy anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or make it a lie but they which are reaching in the lamb's book of life i pray your name will be in the book of life your name will not go out of the book of life but there must be repentance 
There must be faith in Christ. There must be righteousness because except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. We we'll come to number three here and it is the repentance that allows submissive seekers into the kingdom. Repentance that allows submissive seekers into the kingdom, the kingdom of God. In Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9, Second Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse 9, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance but that all should come to repentance. Let that fighting spirit get out of you. Let that oppressive spirit get out of you. Let that run into the law court and spending hours with the lawyer talking about the person you are bringing, you are taking to court and getting all the details. Let all the searching for this document and that document so that they can help you uh, kind of nail him and condemn him. Let all that stop. Look at your life and say, Lord, I understand my own life is like this, my own life is like that. And when you repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ the door of the kingdom will be open to you and then all the problems you have been trying to solve the Lord will solve your problems for you and the Lord will get you to have the good thing you're expecting even much more than you're expecting the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus name he will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And all your inheritance and everything the Lord has for you and the Lord has ordained for you, you are going to receive, you are going to have in Jesus' name. By repentance and salvation, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he restores you into the favor of God and there's no fighting anymore there's no violence anymore there's no taking a lawyer against your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband anymore and now it's a peaceful life and it is in the midst of that peace the provision of God will flow into every one of our lives in Jesus name we we'll come to point number three now. Point number three is divine justification for sub of submissive saints by the Savior. We're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. And such were some of you. It's been talking about fornicators, idolaters, I, uh, adulterers, the effeminate, and the people who are thieves, those who are covetous, those who are greedy, and those who have all the works of the flesh. He says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed. There's cleansing in the blood of Jesus, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the spirit of our god there is forgiveness and salvation number one there is freedom and sanctification number two there is faith and steadfastness of the just number three let's quickly look at them number one the forgiveness and salvation of the justified when you come to the lord when you say lord i'm sorry I'm part of the old people who have sinned and come short of your glory but now I come just as I am but I turn away from my sin I turn away from wanting to have my own way all the time I come in submission I come in humility I come in repentance receive me Lord and forgive me when you are penitent like that when you are tender like that forgiveness comes the forgiveness and salvation 
of the justified he tells us in romans reading from chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 20 in romans chapter 3 we're reading from verse 20 he tells us that all the world has become guilty in the sight of the lord therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight by the law for by the law is the um, is the knowledge of sin and tells us in verse 23 now it says this is the condition of all people on earth because we are born by sinful parents and were born with a sinful nature in sin did my mother conceive me and in sin was i born and because you are part of humanity it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god how do we come out of that situation how do we come out out of that state how do we have the forgiveness of god and the salvation of god it says in verse 24 it says being justified freely we don't have anything to pay for salvation salvation is so costly we don't have anything in our hand to say okay i'm going to pay for this give me that salvation all we do is turn away from the sin repent from our sin and believe on the lord jesus christ and if you are there tonight you have never tasted the peace that comes with salvation you have never tasted uh, the, the joy of salvation you can come tonight the gate and the way is open for everybody because this forgiveness comes freely it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus in verse 25 it says whom god has set forth to be a propitiation is the one who has appeased the almighty and is the one who has made atonement for our sin is the one who by his suffering has become our substitute and god has set him forth to be a propitiation and to be the pascal lamb and to be the substitute through through faith in his blood to declare the righteousness for the remission, removal, cleansing, forgiveness of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. As you call upon the Lord sincerely with all your heart, forgiveness will come, salvation will come, a new life will come unto you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, to declare, I say, to declare at this time is righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Christ in Jesus in first John chapter 1 verse 9 first John chapter 9 chapter 1 verse 9 if we confess our sins if we stop confessing the sins of other people if we stop judging other people and if we don't if we stop condemning other people like the pharisees did and now we look at our own lives and we say i want to now think about my own relationship with god and you confess your sin sincerely and you confess entirely and you confess what the mind of getting out of them and not remaining abiding in sin you cannot say that sin will continue and then the grace of god will continue while you abide in sin you for confess and forsake all your sins if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to uh, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from uh, how many kinds of unrighteousness all unrighteousness as we do it sincerely it will give us that forgiveness and salvation and will be justified in jesus name number two number two let's look at the freedom and sanctification by jesus as you look at first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 it tells us in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 it says and such were some of you but now ye are washed but ye are sanctified he cleanses us he washes us 
He purges us, He purifies us, He sanctifies us. He says, Ye are sanctified. When you come to the Lord, number one, He gives you forgiveness. And with that forgiveness, if He gives you the grace to go and sin no more. Look at John chapter 8, we're reading from verse 11. John chapter 8 reading from verse 11 and she said no man lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more when we're born again it gives us grace to have a new life to have a righteous life if any man be in christ if anyone really be in christ young or old a child or an adult if anyone be in christ is a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things have become new and the grace of god that comes into us makes us to go and sin no more look at verse 12 in verse 12 it tells us that anyone that is living in christ anyone that is following after christ will live a life that is free from all the sins of the past then speak jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me he that followeth me, you are following the Lord, you are fellowshipping with the Lord. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, don't take them to court. Wives, love your husbands, don't take them to court. And don't uh, say, let them divide us let them put everything asunder love yourselves even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it why did he give himself for the church for the people who have come out of the world and he has brought us into the kingdom look at verse 25 26 it says that he might sanctify that's why i went to the cross for us that's why he shed his blood for us that's why he gave himself for us that he might sanctify and cleanse it for the washing of water by the word and then in verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church church without conflict church without division church without disunity church where families are not taking each other to court and church where there is no fighting in fighting and church where the children respect their parents and the parents nurture their children and members take care one of another and the damning nature is taken off and there's no strife and there's no argument and there's no insubordination sanctified glorious church not having sport or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish i pray that will be affected in every one of our lives in jesus name hebrews chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11 in hebrews chapter 2 reading from verse 11 for both he that sanctifies is still doing it today he did it in the past and he's still doing it today as he intercedes for every one of us he sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren but you have a part to play everyone has a part to play for us to have that freedom and sanctification by the lord jesus christ hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 12 in hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 it talks about him christ wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood that he might sanctify the people with his own blood where there is sanctification there's no strife 
What is sanctification? There's no violence against one another. What is sanctification? There's no division. What is sanctification? Will not be taking each other to court. What is the sanctification? Will not be defrauding other people. What is sanctification? There's peace, there's purity, and there is unity. And we're united with the one another as the Father is united to the Son. You can't imagine Jesus Christ reporting the Father to the Pharisees, to the world, in any negative way. No, he cannot do that. And if we're sanctified and we have the same spirit of Christ, the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, we're not going to be having that same attitude to and causing division or having division or having strife in our heart against a brother, against a sister, against a wife, against that husband that we cannot resolve in the privacy of our room. We have to go to the court to settle that way for Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. And then in verse 13 it says let us go forth therefore unto him any problem let us go forth therefore unto him any conflict let us go forth therefore unto him any challenge let us go forth therefore unto him and we feel that rising from our heart and we see that the heart is not totally at rest and not totally peaceful and not totally purified not totally sanctified and then we cannot bear this we cannot bear that and we have to be very aggressive let us therefore go forth unto him without the camp bearing his reproach and when we go like that with sanctification with desire consecration wanting to be sanctified it will sanctify us in jesus name look at verse 14 it says for here we have no continuous city but we seek one to come Let's look at number three before we pray. The faith and the steadfastness of the just. The faith and the steadfastness of the just. We're looking at Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Romans chapter 1 reading from verse 17. For herein, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. From faith to faith. By faith we're saved. By faith we're sanctified, by faith we're purified, by faith we're peace with God, and from faith to faith, any challenge that comes, we believe in God again, and we go back to God in faith, and His righteousness keeps on increasing in our lives, and is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith in hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 <clears throat> hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith the faith we had at the time we got saved let's hold fast whatever water is going under the bridge let us hold fast the profession of our faith the first time we came into the kingdom of God and the first time we came into the experience of salvation, the faith we had, let us hold fast to that profession of faith before we met that man who is now a son in our flesh, before we met that woman who is not now a son in our flesh, before we got to that employment, before we got to that neighborhood, before we got to that person who is, uh, you know, on our nerves and, you know, pushing us now, before that, we had a profession of faith. Let us hold fast to that beginning of the profession of faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Every good thing he has promised to you, God is faithful. I said every good thing God has promised you, God is faithful. And nobody will take what belongs to you without God fighting for you in Jesus' name. Hold on in faith and live by faith. Everything will be all right. 
What the court cannot solve, faith will solve it. What force cannot solve, faith will solve it. What fighting cannot solve, faith will solve it. Live by faith, your life will be all right. Look at verse 38. In verse 38, <coughs> It tells us, it says, now the just shall live by faith. You are just, you are justified, you are child of God, and you are sanctified you. It's giving you peace of mind, and it's giving you purity in your heart, and you are on your way to heaven. The way we live is to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, I will not draw back. I said I will not draw back. Say it confidently, I will not draw back. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 39, it says, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Those who draw back to the, to the ways of the world, what do they draw back to? I said those who draw back to the ways of the world, what do they draw back to? They draw back to perdition, but you are not of them. I am not of them, and we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That salvation the Lord has given us will abide in you in Jesus' name. And as we're going on on our way to the kingdom and Christ is about to come when he comes he'll find you in faith he'll not find you fighting in Jesus name and all the goodness of God he has promised you he will fulfill all the promises he are giving you and nobody will take your inheritance away from you in Jesus name give me good good amen Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Today we really need to make a promise to the Lord that we're going to walk by the way of God. We're going to walk by the word of God. It's emphasized to us today and has told us very clearly and pointedly, unmistakably, that we shouldn't be going to court, to the law court, with anyone. And let us just abide in the peace of God, abide in your place, and the Lord will give you all that belongs to you without having to fight the way the people of God fight. Give yourself to the Lord and abide in his word and his goodness will be upon your life. Open your life and open your mouth and pray to the Lord.